She's on. Great. So uh, as we had been for the last uh, almost exactly a year now, uh, we've been doing these meetings virtually uh, here at the township and we are taking public comment one of four ways. Uh, the way we take public comment uh, is either in the blue drop box at the front of the building. Uh, that box is at the bottom of the stairs at the library entrance. Uh, in case you need to know where that is, we have checked the box right before this meeting and there was no public comment in it. Uh, you may, during the meeting, raise your hand at the appropriate time when the chair is recognizing public comment. Uh, we've been doing that in at two times during the meeting, once in the beginning and once in the end. Uh, the one in the beginning is for uh, public comment related to the agenda and at the end for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, you can raise your hand either on the Zoom uh, virtually. Uh, if you're in by phone, you can also do that. There's a, a, a couple keystrokes that allow you to do that. If by chance you're having trouble doing that and are unable to raise your hand for some reason or we're not recognizing it for some reason uh, at the appropriate time, you may feel free to send an email to public comment at newtowntownship.org. Again, that's public comment at newtowntownship.org. Um, and we do monitor that throughout the meeting. Uh, we, again, public comments only taken at the two times that the uh, chair recognizes it. Um, and when you do send your public comment in, please make sure if you're sending it in because we've either some, you're having trouble that you let us know what your log on is that we would see or the phone number that you've called in on. Uh, and if you're making the comment, please make sure, either way, make sure you please include your name and address so that we can get that for the record. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Neese. Uh, the board was in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss two property related matters, two personnel related matters and one potential litigation matter. With that, Mr. Neese, I'm gonna ask you to uh, call the roll. Uh, Mr. Non? Present. Mr. Partridge? Here. Ms. Roberts Lightcap? Here. Mr. Russo? Uh, you on mute, Mike? Mute. Oh, he's here. Uh, here. Yeah. Mr. Altieri? Here. Good. Uh, your solicitor, engineer, and manager are also here. Thank you, Mr. Neese. Um, for our moment of silence this evening, Let's keep in mind uh, the family of George Cordes. Uh, everybody knows George. He's a big part of this town for a long while. He passed away recently. And I just want to make sure we keep his family in our thoughts and in our prayers. So please uh, bow your heads and uh, do so. Okay, we have before us this evening's agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda or consideration of any uh, changes. So I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Which is made by Supervisor Roberts like that, seconded by Supervisor Partridge to approve this evening's agenda. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Hearing or seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, <clears throat> any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, this brings us to the uh, moment in the agenda for public comment on agenda items. Again, it's the agenda items only. If you have any pu public comment or comments you'd like to make on an agenda item, please raise your hand and be recognized. Uh, before we get, it looks like we have uh, Mrs. Wilson up. Uh, Mr. Neese, did we have any comment in any of our other methodologies of receiving comment? I uh, just checked the email again. We do not. Uh, so I'll uh, bring Patty on. That's fine. All right. Patty Wilson, 4111 Battles Lane. Uh, my first note is on your executive session. I'm a little confused. I've never heard you talk about property. Um, I understand executive session is for purchase of property. So can I understand that that's what the two property matters were? Or are they actually litigation matters? 
Um, secondly, I see that there is um, information there about possibly hiring a health inspector. Um, I'm confused from the notation as to whether we're actually hiring Ms. Pat Pyle or as she is a employee of the Department of Agriculture, whether we're hiring the Department of Agriculture and she would act as our health inspector. I certainly would not want us to get into the issue of hiring somebody to do our health inspections that already has a full-time job somewhere else. Um, the second thing is I note the uh, stop sign slash speed limit sign requests um, for various neighborhoods. I, I personally, as a township resident, would prefer that we not end up over signed here. So though I understand the need for stop signs, I'd rather see us spend more time. And even if it means hiring another officer, hiring another officer to do speed enforcement, as I do understand with the addition of so many delivery trucks that speed is a problem. And I would love to see more enforcement of that. Um, finally, I see in the manager's report a note about paid time off for COVID, which was somewhat confusing to me because my understanding of sick time and or short-term disability is that's why we have sick time, whether or not it's for COVID or any other illness. Um, I would be concerned that um, specifying sick time related to a specific virus, disease, or otherwise is problematic from a uh, legal standpoint um, because we do have HIPAA laws. You're not really even supposed to know why people are out sick unless they choose to tell you. So I am also bringing that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mrs. Wilson. With regards to your first comment, yes, uh, we were uh, discussing the potential purchase of property. Uh, Marvelous. Two different properties. On item number two regarding the health inspector, uh, we'll talk more about that at the agenda item. But suffice to say that uh, we are not hiring the Department of Agriculture. We are hiring an individual. Uh, your, your comments on the last two points are so noted. Um, if there's no further public comment, we will uh, move on. We have uh, that we had the opportunity and have before us the minutes from our March 8th, 2021 meeting. I'll entertain a motion for approval of those minutes or consideration of any changes. Make a motion to approve the minutes to the March 8th, 2021 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap to approve the meetings for our minutes for our March 8th meeting as written. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda, we have reports. Uh, I'll start going through these. I notice that some of these folks are online. So if, you, um, if you're listening and you ha have any addendum or additions to your report, raise your hand. Otherwise, Ms. Mr. Chuck. Chairman, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah, okay, Mr. Neeson. I think we skipped an item on the agenda. What did I skip? Oh, nine. I'm sorry. Number nine. Point. Yeah, I did skip number nine. I'm sorry. That was an uh, oversight on my part. Uh, item nine, uh, consider approving the appointment of Lynn Elston to the library board to fill an open position that will expire 12 31 2023. Would anybody like to offer a motion? So, so move for approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion is made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap to uh, uh, approve the appointment of Lynn Elston to the library board to fill an open position that will expire on 12 31 2023. As I understand this, Mr. Neese, this was a recommendation of the library board and we have reviewed the resume and uh, everything like that, right? That is correct. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Welcome aboard, uh, Ms. Elston, if you're listening. All right, now I'm gonna move to 10 reports. Uh, we have a report from our police department. Uh, Chief Lon, I believe, is on. Does anybody have any questions for Chief Lon or anything to add to the report? Chief, mm -hmm. nope, good, okay. Uh, we have a report from our fire department, Chief Everloff. Likewise, anybody have any questions for Chief Everloff or would Chief Everloff like to add anything? I'm not seeing his hand. Uh, I do have some, I don't know if the Chief wants to highlight uh, the two two of the four points you added at the end there with the fund drive coming up and then also the need for volunteers. Doug, I don't know if you, or Chief, I don't know if you wanna give a 
elevator pitch on the importance of that, but the floor is yours, I think. I certainly can. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All righty. So, yeah, thank you for giving me an opportunity. So, obviously, our annual fund drive will be going out uh, in the near future. We were hoping it was going to go out in February. But with a lot of the new streets in town, our team has been updating a lot of the addresses and residents. So, we're hoping that that will go out the first week of April. So, we really encourage our businesses and our residents to uh, contribute, obviously, um, all the donations go towards funding both the operations and the business side of the, the organization. So the operations side would be the tactical side, the emergency response side, and then the business side obviously is, you know, paying our mortgage. We got a hefty mortgage now, um, you know, making sure we keep the lights on and the water running and so forth. So um, we could really use the help. Obviously you could see, in the previous years, the fund drive continues on a downward slope. So we're hoping that we can see a change with that. We understand there's a lot of um, residents that are seeing some financial difficulties. We totally understand that. So if they can be as gracious as possible without putting themselves you know, in financial debt, we would greatly appreciate that. And obviously, as far as the uh, volunteer pitch, we are always in need of volunteers. Um, it's obviously very difficult for us to raise volunteers in this day and age. Uh, the, the younger kids that used to come in just aren't there anymore. And so we struggle. We have a, an age gap mainly between 25 and, and the, the 30 year or 35 year age group. So we struggle um, with that. But uh, during the daytime, we have uh, paid or part-time paid personnel that uh, supplement the, the volunteers when they're working their normal jobs. But during the evening hours, obviously, um, you know, we could use as much help as possible. Some of the downward the downside to someone joining the organization is the amount of training that uh, we're required to have these days. Um, anybody new coming in as a firefighter um, that is above the age of 18 basically has to go through 188 hours of training. So it's a lot. Uh, we have annual required training that our members, current membership are required to go through. So, um, you know, they're the difficulties that we see. We have been very fortunate over the past couple of uh, months of the past year or so to have members from other fire companies that have moved into our area that have since joined. So, I mean, that's, that's awesome for us because we benefit from the fact that we have somebody that's a seasoned veteran that's, that's coming into our organization. But uh, obviously if there's anybody that's interested, if there's any residents that are listening and they have a, 16 or a 17 or an 18 year old that's sitting at home and is looking for something to do, send them our way. <clears throat> we have been putting on in-house training for uh, the junior group, um, which has been very successful. We just started that beginning of this year. We call it our Proby School. So, and it's being taught in-house by our members. So um, we're hoping to continue that. So for the individuals that have a difficult time getting to a, a certified fire school, we can provide them with some training in-house so that when they do hit a fire ground or an emergency scene, they have a clue what's going on and, and, and are able to, uh, to react to the incident. So um, obviously they can visit our website at www.nsfc.org or you can drop me an email at chief at nsfc.org and uh, we'll be happy to uh, get you some additional information. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Everlaw. Uh, next, I lost my place here. <laughs> next, we have, a, uh, we have the report from uh, George Sharris, Public Works Director. I don't see George's hand up, so I'm assuming he has nothing to add. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Sharris? I just have one question. Did we ever, Steve, did we ever get the uh, sweeper back? 
Uh, <laughs> no, we've not gotten the sweeper back yet. Uh, about two weeks ago, I believe it was, it was moved from the body shop over to the sweeper repair shop and it's where it is now and they're working on it. Uh, I think we're probably a month and a half, two months out based on what I understand. Okay, thank you. I asked the same question today, Mr. Russo. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, we have our extensive reports from uh, our building codes officer, Andy Reschek. Does anybody have any questions for Andy? Uh, we have our report from Rich Lafayette. Does anybody I don't have a question for him, but do we want to, uh, what, do we, he, what do we want to do with the fire code adoption? He says he needs um, guidance from the board. That's a good point, Mr. Altieri. Um, in the back on, it would be the packet, it's page 88. Right. Um, right. Andy's here, I don't know. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Andy, if you wanna jump in here and give us some guidance on what you're looking for from us, I think that'd be helpful. Oh, there he comes. Uh, can you hear me now? We can, yes. All right, wonderful. Uh, yeah, I can just, I, I've, I've talked it over with the fire marshal, and I think the reason I put the question before the board is, uh, it, I mean, it's really an administrative question as to whether or not you folks think it's a wise choice. The building code only recognizes the fire code by reference, so it's not fully applicable. Um, however, there's a lot of good parts of the fire code that we don't, we don't have, we don't have use for, or I mean, we, have, excuse me. we have a lot of use for it. It's just unfortunate. We don't really have the ability to, to grasp a hold of everything that the code offers. So in, in doing so, we would have to go through the procedural requirement of the state to adopt the code formally. Um, that would require a public hearing. And we would then have to present um, an ordinance to the state to explain our position. And uh, the main thing that we could use is um, it's, it clearly defines uh, fire apparatus access roads and how they uh, have to be designed. It, and it gives complete standards. Uh, I mean, the fire marshal obviously knows what those standards are uh, just because of his, his full, full time job but it, it would be better to have something in the code to clearly define it for a developer. It also provides things uh, like locations of hydrants, designs of the water system, uh, a lot of things that we could use in the land development realm that would be, I, I think, beneficial. Well, I, I will say that this is a fairly common practice. I was, uh, for instance, diving into the Upper Murray Township code book today and uh, they adopted the International Fire Code. I know a lot of other municipalities have done that. So right. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Um, but you say we have to get the state on board with this too? Well, there's a procedure that we would have to follow with the state in order to do so. Because they, here again, the state only adopts it by reference. Okay, right. So we certainly have the fire code available um, and we use it quite often. It's just that we can only really apply it when the building code references. I, I have no problem. I don't know how other supervisors feel, but if we're all in agreement that this is something we should do, we can have Mr. Nice start that process and get whatever we got to do on next month's agenda so we can start make, moving us forward. One, that's, that's wonderful. I guess that if it's, if it's okay with the board, I would just prepare an ordinance. Um, and then we can kind of go from there, get it on a public meeting, advertise it, and then uh, submit it to the state. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting nods. So Mr. Neese and, and Andy, if you guys could take care of that and uh, sure. get that on our next agenda, at least to advertise. And uh, yeah. if you're going to prepare your units, at least have us some time for us to review it before we uh, have it on the next meeting. But yeah, that'd be sure. great. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, we'll probably have it, get it together, and then we'll have an advertisement time. So it'll be a little bit, but we'll get okay. all that before you. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. All right, um, Rich Lafayette, any questions for Rich? All right. 
I would make note uh, that the finance group has been working with our auditors uh, and uh, they are working on finalizing the audit and they hope to have our DCED report done this week uh, that we can get out. Uh, as you know, that's usually due at the end of March right. and the beginning of April. So we're working hard to get that done, but uh, they've been working hard on that and looks like we're gonna be able to get that done hopefully. Okay. Next, we have, a, we have a report from our library director, Arlene. Does uh, Arlene's on? Does anybody have any questions for Arlene Caruso? Uh, if not, uh, our next report is from Wade Pollack uh, from Parks and Rec. Does everybody have any questions for Wade? I believe I saw him on here too. All right. I have a question, but I, I want to highlight the because he mentions in there Greer Park Master Plan. Uh, Wade Pollack, uh, Joanne Conley from URDC and Cindy Mahalo from the Environmental Advisory Council and I met with our state representative, Chris Quinn, on Thursday of last week to talk to him about additional grant money for the uh, Greer Park Master Plan. So essentially we're going after three pockets of money. Um, and this one uh, that we're asking Chris to, we're asking him to support all of them, which he has graciously agreed to. Um, but the one that we met with him on specifically is for the DCED grant where you know, the way it's kind of broken down is it's essentially around like 350,000 altogether um, for the grant. So just wanted to give an update that we met with him on Thursday, went over the entire presentation with him. We, uh, Joanne Connolly from URDC brought a huge schemat schematic. Uh, he was extremely excited about it. Like I said, was in full support of it. So I, I've said this time and time again, we have a very strong ally and Chris Quinn is our state representative here in Newtown. He's the, the mere fact that we even were able to do the uh, steering committee was because of the grants that he was able to secure, as you all know. Um, and so he, he's on board with getting us even more uh, grant money to ensure that this master plan gets uh, through to completion. So uh, Leonard, what you met with, it's in addition to this 15.1, this DCNR grant that yeah. we're talking about tonight. Okay, so it's an addition. To yeah, there's Great. three, all, all in all, and I'm probably gonna butcher this a little bit, uh, but all in all, there's three main pockets that we're going after. We're going after DCNR, DCED, and um, Steve, what's that third National one? National Fish and Wildlife. <laughs> National Fish and Wildlife. Oh, that's this other one that's on here as well. Yeah. You'll probably have the third one on here next meeting. Okay. I didn't know what the f Fish and Wildlife one was for. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're, if I can like just sum it up real quickly, one, uh, is aimed at basically helping us to set up the wetland area uh, that we want to maintain uh, in the uh, smaller area that we're calling the smaller pond area and the boardwalk and helping us with all of that. The fish and wildlife is going to help us re we redo the stream so that the stream will go through the property and have all the required uh, riparian buffer and those kind of things. And then finally, the last one, uh, I believe, is the DC uh, ED. You know, the the yeah the DC ED grant, uh, which is to help put in the um, walkway, the boardwalk kind of area uh, by the pond, so that people can go fishing and enjoy that location. Great, nice work. Thank you. Outstanding. I, it's a it's great to see all this progress moving ahead on this uh, park and uh, hopefully we can get all of this money and uh, really move the project forward. Super. Uh, moving on, uh, leisure services, uh, any questions for Rich? I, I, wanna, I just wanna give uh, Rich kudos. He's doing a great job with the basketball league for all the kids on Saturdays and Sundays. He's uh, there every day himself, taking their temperatures as they come in and, and the kids have enjoyed the league. I watched well, those comments, Mr. Russo. I participated in the last um, leisure services meeting, and the basketball program is huge. I mean, it's 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 a huge undertaking. It, it, it's there's a ton of kids involved. I think it's a great thing that we've got going there. Uh, you know, he's doing a great job. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about Rich and the uh, folks over there at Leisure Services. It's outstanding. So thank you, Rich. Um, all right, next we have a report from our township engineer. Uh, Eileen, do you have anything to add to your report? Uh, there's an item later on the agenda, which is gonna provide an update to one of the items, but that's all. Okay. 
Um, I think uh, this said I have a question. Mike had sent you a mail about the uh, flooding on Sawmill Road. And I saw you, you had sent a response. Um, can you um, elaborate on that? I mean, that's pretty, you know, significant flooding. It's been going on for years. And I think that you said it was supposed to be addressed, but, you know, it was delayed when the firehouse purchased the property uh, on Sawmill in 252. Yeah, we had originally uh, planned to attempt to alleviate the flooding by going through several private properties by acquiring an easement. Um, and I think the whole project came to a screeching halt when the fire company purchased the corner property. And there was even thoughts way back then that the township would attempt to acquire it so that we could alter those plans and maybe come through that property on the corner instead of going through private property. But all of that was delayed in those processes, so. Eileen, do we have, had we previously approved a budget for this? Uh, back in 2015, there was a proposal submitted for the surveying and design services. We completed the surveying as I mentioned, did um, a partial design, nothing that went to uh, final but we do have plans that are partway done. What do you need from us to finish those plans? I'd need to reevaluate uh, for you all what um, I see as costs moving forward for that to be authorized. Is that something you could get to Mr. Neese by the next meeting so then we can take it under consideration? Absolutely. Everybody okay with that plan? Yep. All right, if you could do that then, Eileen, uh, get you know, get something there so then we can take a look and get this moving again. It doesn't seem to be any reason why we're holding this at this point. Very good. Thanks. Super. Any other questions for our township engineer? Yes, I have a question, Eileen. Now that the Earl's uh, Lake is uh, dams removed, well, are they going to go back and grade that and plant grass? What what is the game plan with the, with that area? In discussions with DEP, the only thing that they indicated was to be done is stabilization of the areas where basically um, raw ground was exposed with the removal of the dam. So it's, it's a matter of getting that stabilized, vegetated this season. Okay, thank so you. We'll be planting grass or some other type of growing thing there, correct? Yes. Okay. Does that answer the question, Mr. Russo? Yeah, no, that's that's great. Thank you. Because okay. people have asked me and I said, I don't know what the plan is. So now I know. Super. All right. One, one thing, Eileen, do we have a road program this year? We do not. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I didn't see it on her list. Okay. No. Joanne, I mean Joanne, Eileen. I thought that they, um, I thought they were required to put riprap in the stream bank as well. Are they not doing that? The channel itself actually has riprap in it. It's the areas adjacent that were exposed with the dam removal that need the vegetative stabilization. Okay. So put it into layman's terms, since I'm not an engineer and, and I don't do this, if I can get a better understanding of it. And tell me if I'm wrong. After they breach the dam, my understanding was that that water will flow into its own natural stream and that that stream is what they were putting the riprap in. Is that not what they were doing? No, that is part of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. And when you say the exposed areas, it's everything that is now that was underwater that is now open land, correct? Correct. Okay. And that's what they're stabilizing? Yes. Okay. And John went to four years of engineer school. I just got it in one meeting. Oh. <laughs> well, five years plus if you count part-time masters it was more like you know, 17 years but that's okay <laughs> hey, some people do it before i took a longer time <laughs> uh with that unless there's any further questions before i leave we will move into mr niece's report yes so um i, I want to talk real quickly about the county uh tax reassessment 
and give an update of where we are because we are having people reach out to us with some concerns. And, you know, we've got people that have experienced some pretty significant tax increases this year because of the reassessment. And so I just wanted to talk about that for just a minute and where we are and what the what happened at the township level and we're, and what was going on with the school district and just so that everybody's on the same page. So we, when we went into this, uh, remembered that this was court ordered for the county to do this reassessment and that the township had nothing uh, to do with the reassessment. You know, we, we ended up being the recipient of uh, what happened and it, when I say the recipient, it really wasn't any gift necessarily. It was more of just a challenge for us to figure out how we were supposed to do our tax collection. And the key for that was that when, when the reassessment was done, the township's revenue is no greater than before the reassessment was done. And so we had 5.5 million uh, that was our assessment before, and we're at 5.5 million after. I, I may be off 100,000, but it's right in that area. And actually this year, we're collecting about $260 less uh, from what was our established rate from 2019 to where we are in 2020. Obviously for some homeowners and for some businesses, they're seeing something very different. Um, our average bill, and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but the, the average bill went, the ones that went down, there was about 40% of the township that went down and about 60% of the township that went up, something like that. And so the 40% that went down, went down about $250 a, a place. And then about 180 was the increase for those that went up. And I, that's an average. So there's homes that went up much less and there's homes that went up much more. Um, and again, what I wanna make emphasis is that, and for this board uh, to, be, for, to be clear for the public is that this board did nothing to change taxes other than to set the millage so that we collected the exact same dollar amount that you collected in 2019 to collect in 2000. I mean, I'm sorry, the same amount you collected in 2020 to collect in 2021. And so, uh, I, I share that because there's been a lot of confusion. Some people have thought that this board did a tax increase. This board did not do a tax increase. And so I just wanted to be really clear. Um, we're getting those questions here at the office. Um, and so I wanted to just go publicly. We are going to uh, redo a little bit of a presentation on the website and we'll send that out and we'll put that out on Facebook as well. Um, just to uh, let everybody kind of see what we collected in, or in 2020 and what we are anticipating collecting in 2021. Now, but Steve, just, I'm sorry, yeah. I'll let you finish. Go ahead, finish. I just, I just wanted to say, but I just, again, I, you know, the, the, this board made the decision that they didn't want to do a tax increase last year because of that. A lot of municipalities have done tax increases on that. And so people have heard that and said, well, municipalities have been doing tax increases. Some have, Newtown Township did not. Now, Steve, when you say that um, some 40% uh, of the township, I'm sorry, was went down $180 about average. And, yeah, that's and average remain, about 200 and something. So, but you're just saying that's just on the township tax, correct? That's just on the township tax. Now you had done a great letter that had gone with the with the tax bills that showed a pie chart that we are out of all of the taxes that we collect as a township that we collect for the school district and we collect for sorry and we collect for um, the township and the or I'm sorry for the school district and the county ours is 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 a small portion of that pie. That is correct. So that's what we've got control over. Sorry, we're popular right now. Sorry about that. Yes. I'm done. I'll put it on mute. Thank you. Yeah, that, uh, Tina makes a good point. You know, uh, and and so I've uh, I've talked to Rich Lafayette, our finance person, and I've asked him to reach out to uh, Joe Driscoll from the school district. Uh, we're going to do uh, 
we're going to work together on some education on this tax reassessment because the school district is going to be in a situation. I mean, if you if you just understand the differences and you look, if you anybody knows their bill, um, you know the school district's portion is you know what about fifteen times as much as your uh, your your township piece, and so uh, just think about what that increase was for uh, for you for the township side. If you had an increase, that's what you're going to look at uh, on the school district side, and so we're going to work with them and continue to do some education for everybody so that people understand that. Um, you know, the, the base amount of whatever, who, whatever's being collected was the same. And uh, that, that's required by law. And so that's what we did. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Um, so the, the next thing, uh, the, uh, on, my next thing on my, uh, uh, my report is the, Historic uh, Newtown Square Day, they intend to be back live this year, which is a great thing, um, on June 5th. And, and we'll be working with them to make sure all the proper COVID uh, protocols are in place. Uh, but they have asked if we wish to sponsor a page as we've done in the past. And if the board is willing for that, we will uh, work towards getting that done. Everybody good with that? It's, yeah. it's three, I think yes. $350, so. We've done it every year. We should do it again. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Second. Um, the next thing is uh, Bruce and the EAC, uh, Bruce Killen and the EAC have worked very hard. Uh, and I think Bruce carried a major part of the load in getting us uh, reestablished as a tree city. And uh, we've got that word uh, late last week. We're still waiting on some uh, press releases and things that they're going to send our way, uh, and we'll get those out when that comes. But uh, very exciting news. Um, very happy for that. I did have a conversation with Bruce right afterwards and just thanked him for his hard work uh, in helping us get that uh, reinstated uh, for the township. That's awesome. Great, great work to you, mm -hmm. and that's That's awesome. It's also important to know too, they, they changed the criteria. So it's, it's a lot more difficult to become a tree city and Bruce and his team were able to, to get us over that hump there. So I think it's great. I, I, I said, I asked him today actually if they had a press release yet and he said that he, that he reached out to them and they didn't have anything. So I think uh, we're going to be putting something together piecemeal to kind of hammer it home because it's great information and it's a good achievement for Bruce and, and his team. We get our signs back up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so this COVID sick pay, um, so, so that everybody understands, uh, last year, uh, we were required by law to offer additional sick leave for anyone who had, uh, a COVID illness. Um, in addition to that, we were required to offer additional, um, family leave if they had additional responsibilities either with their children being out of school or if the, or if there was an issue with uh, someone in their family who was sick. And that was required by law. That was not an option. Uh, we had to do it. I shared that with the board and uh, we went and did that. However, in January, it became optional. And so the request that I, the, not the request, but the question that came up from some of the staff was, are we still doing the COVID sick leave? And I said, I really believe that would be a board call. And, um, and so I'm bringing it back to the board. Uh, as you know, we have uh, what I considered very good sick leave uh, at the township. Um, so, uh, and, and though there's one person who's been out on COVID, who's been out with COVID that didn't have leave because they were new, uh, we would work with them and uh, take care of you know, what needs to be done there. But uh, so sick, uh, the sick leave that an individual has is more than ample to typically cover it. But if the board wishes to continue, it is an option, uh, but that's a, something that's brought forward. And so I was just bringing that before the board. What's the board's pleasure on this? I mean, uh, do we, does anyone feel we need to continue to do this? Or I guess my understanding is that many of our employees, most of our employees have, adequate sick time saved up, which they're allowed to do 
to handle any type of uh, COVID sickness? I'm a no on that. What is the, um, do you know, Steve, from, from your COG meetings and things like that, do you know what it is sort of, uh, like what are the other municipalities doing? Not that it's going to have a big uh, deciding factor on how that, because, because I think all of our policies are going to be a little bit different in terms of the vacate, uh, sick time and everything. Yeah. Just curiosity, has that been something that's been discussed to be kind of consistent across the board? We, it has not been discussed that I know of. Um, I mean, to be honest, there is a slight tax break on, on your, uh, taxes, uh, if you give it, but that also means you're giving two, two additional weeks of sick leave, you know? So, I mean, I don't know that it, the, the tax break, it doesn't cover necessarily all the costs It covers your tax costs. So, um, it's not a, it's not a dollar for dollar, um, piece. And we already provide a generous amount of sick leave to our employees right now. We, we provide 120 hours a year. And they can save, they can carry it over to a maximum. What's the maximum? They maximum of 800. And do we have employees that have that already? Uh, we have a lot of employees that max out every year at 800 and are cut back to 800. 800 hours, that's uh, what, what? The quarter of a year, a third of a year almost. 20, yeah. yeah it's, okay, so I, 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 I'm, I'm with uh, Mr. Partridge on this. I don't think we need to uh, yeah. extend any additional COVID paid sick time at this point. Okay. What's everybody else's feeling? Agree. I agree. I agree. Agree. We've got a majority. We're good, uh, Steve. I think we, we don't need to do that anymore. Okay, great. So um, the the next thing is the school zone upgrade. Uh, you all been talking about that. Uh, we now have signal service in. Uh, you proved that at the last meeting. The first thing we kind of got them on was helping us get the school zone signals uh, upgraded. Uh, that had been put on hold. Uh, we've got some custom posts that have been put in uh, for the static school zone signs. Uh, and we've also updated the end of school zone signs uh, over there on Route 3. Uh, the four, nat four new school zone flasher signs have been ordered and are scheduled for installation by uh, signal service. Uh, we've also ordered the new mast arm uh, signal or signage and traffic signal uh, backplates uh, also to be installed by signal service. If you remember right, we had to work through PennDOT to get all of that approved uh, and that's been done. Uh, and then um, the remaining uh, ground level signs will be changed out by Public Works in the next couple of weeks, uh, actually two to three weeks. Uh, depending on when the uh, mast arm stuff is done. So all of that will be done by that point. Um, so that's where we are with that. Also a quick reminder, well, not a reminder, but that um, the stop signs uh, that were installed on uh, Partridge Lane and then with new speed limit signs that were installed on Crum Creek have been installed um, and are in place. And so I wanted to let you know that. Um, you had all asked, I believe it was maybe two meetings ago, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, and I say everyone asked, I believe it was Mr. Russo that asked about the trees on Goshen Road uh, that were where the um, Pico. Where Pico had cut through. Uh, George is meeting out there, uh, I believe it's uh, this Wednesday to finalize <laughs> the tree planting with Pico. Uh, but they're going to put in what, what they're, I guess they're the six giant arborvitae uh, will be there. But then with that, there's going to be a couple crab apples, a bottle brush buckeyes, and an arrowwood something or another. Uh, I'm really good with these. <laughs> there's a reason why we have a tree committee. Um, and uh, they do a great job. They rattle off these names and they actually rattle off all the scientific ones. So I give them a lot of credit, but I get lost. But it's, uh, so we're having those put in at that location and that will help uh, with that uh, view shed in, uh, in that way. So um, that that's uh, in addition to that, uh, the public works department's hoping to do some additional plannings uh, over and beyond what the what Pico's doing in that uh, kind of along that area. We've lost a lot of ash trees uh, along uh, Goshen Road and uh, actually have some more that are going to have to come down. So just want everybody to be aware of that. 
Mr. Chairman, based on um, the discussions uh, in relating to potential additional lands, um, I'd like for uh, approval to move forward with getting appraisals uh, on two pieces of property in the township. And these are for open space, I believe, correct? That, that is my understanding, Mr. Chairman. Super. Would anybody like to offer a motion uh, to engage the services of our appraiser to uh, on some properties to, for consideration for uh, acquisition? Uh, You're made by Supervisor uh, Russo. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Are we uh, putting a, um, not to a exceed. price tag on this? Yeah, not to exceed. What's the appropriate number? You're looking for two appraisals, Steve? I think we're looking for two appraisals, yes. So uh, what, based on um, previous services with, uh, with the appraiser, uh, wh what do you think is... Uh, I, I, I want to, and I'm, I'm going back and I may be off. I wanted to say the, the appraisal for the sawmill property was 3,500, but I may be wrong on that. That's, that was the, what I believe I remember that. Appraisal. So we authorize not to exceed $7,000. That would be uh, adequate. You believe? I believe so. All right. You good with that, Mr. Partridge and Mr. Russo? Yeah. I'll second. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Made by Supervisor Russo. Seconded by Supervisor Partridge to engage the services of a uh, of an appraiser uh, for consideration of future land for open space uh, in the amount not to exceed seven thousand dollars for two properties. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Neese, get them fired up and start it. Uh, I actually, uh, my other <laughs> note I've actually already talked about was the audit. And so um, I think we've already said that we're working on that and it's coming along well. Good. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Neese? I do. So Steve, I sent an email and I probably sent it uh, in addition to a couple other ones. So it was probably easy to fall through, but um, it's nothing pressing. But since we, I think it's safe to say the board has been upset with some of the decisions uh, as a result of, I guess, the court um, ruling on some of the zoning um, the decisions that have happened in the township where, where the zoning hearing board has been reversed for a litany of reasons on, on different applications. I know that we've kind of talked about the idea of getting our zoning hearing board more training. Um, oh, yes. And one of the things that I found on PSAT's website, which for those watching is Pennsylvania Association of Township Supervisors, they have a training coming up on April 27th. So I wanted to bring it up to the board. Uh, for us to go and, and see who on the zoning hearing board and strongly encourage those on the zoning hearing board. It's a webinar. I think it's only a few hours. It's very cheap. It's $45 for non-members, which I would suspect they are not. It's not, I don't think it's membership for the, for the township. I think it's membership for individual humans. So it's only $45 a person. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think that it's fair to say that we've not been too happy with decisions uh, coming out of the zoning hearing board, either some of them coming out of the board itself or coming out on appeal. Uh, and so I think it's important for us to uh, kind of beef that education up. And, and so I, I would ask that the board uh, allow us to move forward with, with sending our zoning hearing board members if they are available that day. So I don't know if we need to do a motion for that, Mr. Neese, or do you want to do it? I mean, I guess not to exceed the same thing based off of five members. Yeah, we could we could do it as a not to exceed. Um, let me really. If it's just the five members, it's obviously two twenty five. Uh, I don't know if we want the alternates to go. Um, usually, we. Uh, I mean, I've I've always offered it to the alternates as well. Right, because the alternates may have to move up. So price, and if, I think yes, alternates yeah. towards anybody. Right. Because so this zone, zoning board is 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 very very important, and um, I don't think people realize um, how much hinges on their decisions. So I think it's important to have uh, the alternates go as well. Okay. And what I would do too, Mr. Neese, is I would put a large emphasis that this is what the board is really really uh, recommending, uh, strongly right. recommending. I will, I will put it out. Hey, 
you can tell them that we're, we're putting out the money we're expecting. We're not recommending, we're expecting you to attend. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you remember right, we've been telling any new people they have to go get training. And so this will put it right there. Every interview we do, we tell them that, yes. We say yep. Silver platter, there you go. Here's your silver platter. So that was the first yeah. question. The second one I had is in relation to the, the stop sign at Crum Creek. Um, and, you know, it's actually, um, I guess, sort of a point too to what Ms. Wilson said. Is there, is there a way that we want to kind of tackle the issues um, in the different neighborhoods where people might think signs are needed or signs should be? I mean, case in point, Mr. Russo, Supervisor Russo brought up this, this issue on Crumb Creek. There's not a single stop sign in that entire neighborhood. And rightfully so, there needs to be one up there. But, you know, obviously, I think we all have heard from other neighbors about uh, other areas that either need signs. Um, so, I mean, sort of in, in uh, raising the question of what Ms. Wilson said, is there a way that we need Eileen or the chief to look at some of our intersections? What are unsafe? What need signs or don't need signs? And what just need enforcement? Is there anything that we can do? Because, like I said, I, I'm going to be sending an email at the end of this meeting uh, talking about an intersection off of Sugar Maple and Roberts Road that I almost got ran over myself and then a resident brought it up um, from, from a couple weeks ago. So just kind of throwing it out there, what you would sort of see uh, kind of tackling that multifaceted issue there, either at the chairman or, or Mr. Nee, since the chairman's a traffic uh, engineer. <laughs> I, I've certainly participated for other municipalities in what I'll call township wide traffic studies before. Um, you know, that's something that, that we could certainly authorize our engineer to do or get a proposal for or something like that. Um, I, I think we do a pretty good job of that now. And when things are brought to our attention, generally we uh, address them and, and nine times out of 10, we, we, you know, typically do what's requested once we study it and look at it. So. Um, I, I don't necessarily see the problem uh, that, we, that, that they exist there now if there is one, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. So, I mean, it, it's, it's really the board's pleasure whether we want to undertake an entire traffic study and, and look at these intersections or whether we just want our chief uh, and his uh, officers to go out and take a look at them or have our engineer do a, a you know, drive yeah. through. And, and, the, and I might have phrased it wrong. I just didn't want to clog the agenda with sign requests and then the need to go out to advertise to amend the ordinance and so on and so forth. Um, I don't have a problem doing that. And, and if any resident comes forward and, and it's warranted, then yeah, I mean, I have no problem stating on the record that I would be voting in favor of that. I just didn't know if there was a simple, uh, more simplistic way to kind of tackle it. I don't have an answer to it. It's literally an open-ended question. Uh, and it's one that I, I, I wanted to, to bring up um, to just see what, what the thoughts were. Well, again, we'd have to retain either our own people or, or somebody else to essentially do a survey of the township, you know, drive the roads, look at what intersections have, what signs, and assess whether they're the appropriate signs, and then make a recommendation as to, uh, you know, improvements. So it sounds like it's simpler to just do it piece by piece. I think so. <laughs> and, 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 and just to be clarified, Mr. Uh, Gallagher, um, who has two very young children in my neighborhood, brought this up to me. And then I asked him to write a letter to the township because we have a lot of houses on my street in Crum Creek that have changed over from older folks. And we have about 10 or 12 young kids that live in that one section. And coming around the corner at that particular intersection, there's no stop sign. And it's basically a, a, a non visible intersection. So you're at, at the corner. And there's been a lot of near misses with uh, young folks and strollers and whatnot. That's why that. He brought that up to um, to the attention. I, I personally don't even use that intersection. So very often at all, I go out the other way. So that's how that came about. Good constituent services, because I stole that exact model. And so the individual who I spoke to this weekend, and I'll forward this off to you, Steve, it's 80, and we can just talk about it now, 84 Roberts Roads, 84 Roberts Road. It's the intersection of Roberts and Sugar Maple. People come off of Sawmill, which we know is a speeding, speeding uh, highway as it is. Apparently they whip around the corner and they just blast through that intersection. There's, there's a stop sign uh, at Sugar Maple and Roberts, Roberts, excuse me, where Sugar Maple enters into Roberts Way, but there's nothing going down um, Roberts Way. And I've, and I've received a request here recently, actually on Newtown Street Road or New, 
it, what's it beyond the circle? Is that Newtown Street Road? Beyond the circle. Newtown Road, Road is 252. It's, it's, it's Newtown yeah, Road. St. David said it's Newtown Road. Newtown Road. Newtown Road. And that's going to have to go back to PennDOT because that's, that's a PennDOT. Highway, right? Yeah, that's a state road. You could, it, um, it, I think we're hearing that we need to look at the intersection of Sugar Maple and Roberts and, and, and perhaps you can get the chief and our engineer to look at that and make some recommendations on what needs to be done there. Yep. When we're installing the new stop signs, are we painting um, a stop, um, a, a line on the road at the stop sign? I don't believe we did when we installed the one at the corner of uh, Partridge in Crumb Creek, but we can look at that. I, I think that it's a visual. It's a visual that makes make it it kind of draws people's attention. Uh, yeah, the, to stop. yeah, the chief and I were actually stop. talking about that corner today. We're going to have to have a visit with the uh, property that's on the corner there because the line of sight is not good when you come up that oh, intersection. Okay. Well, they're called stop bars. They're not required to stop signs, but certainly there are recommended uh, markings. So yeah, that, that's something we need to do. I just find myself as a driver, especially when there's a new stop sign, if you see a marking on the road, especially our roads, um, you know, if you see a new marking, it attracts your attention. Like, what's that? Especially if you're going fast. Not that I go fast, but... <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Neese? All right, moving on, item number 11, payments. Uh, we need to, uh, we need a motion to consider approving the $756.50 escrow release payment to Unitex Asphalt Services for completed work at 19 Campus Boulevard. So moved. There's second. 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 Motion made by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap, seconded by Supervisor Partridge to approve item 11.1. .1. Is there any further questions or discussions on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, under item 12, we have two items. I'm gonna put them into one motion. I had the opportunity before this evening meeting to review the bills on check register A dated today in the amount of $139,052.70. And I had the opportunity to review the bills on check register B dated today in the amount of $33,906.10. And that is my motion that we approve the checks on register A and B. Is there a second? Second. Motion was seconded by Supervisor Partridge. Any further questions or discussion on the motion? Seeing or hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda, we have new business item number one on our new business is consider appointing the township arborist, Mr. Neese. Sorry about that. We received uh, two uh, responses, uh, one from uh, Rockwell Associates and one from uh, Urban Research Development Corporation. Uh, upon review, we uh, believe that Rockwell Associates uh, would be the uh, best response. They seem to have more experience. Uh, they've worked for several of our neighboring municipalities. Uh, they are uh, a little bit more per hour, uh, but they are, at the end of the day, um, because of their location, there's some savings uh, in drive time, which will save overall, I believe, in the process. Uh, so uh, that, uh, my recommendation would be to go with Rockwell Associates uh, at $105 an hour, they, they, for, and a, max, a maximum of $800 per day. Uh, that is their uh, billing piece. Um, and uh, would make note that they are, they're, their focus is as a consulting arborist, and that's what we were looking for. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Rockwell as our arborist. I'll, I'll second that. that. Motion was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Russo to appoint Rockwell as the township arborist. 
uh, again, this is an appointment, I guess, through the end of the year. And then like we do with, with all of our consultants, uh, we would reappoint or consider reappointing the arborist uh, at a reorganization each year, so. Um, yeah, I think this is the right decision. Um, you know, I think URDC has done an amazing job when it comes to the Greer Park uh, Strategic or Steering Committee. They have gone above and beyond on everything that we have asked them to do in regards to that. But with the Shade Tree Commission being so new, I think it's important for us to have an individual who has does this, you know, for the other municipalities. URDC, as good as they are, they've never actually been in an arborist role, whereas Rockwell Associates does it for Radnor Township, White Marsh, and Ridley Park Borough. Uh, my firm represents Ridley Park Borough. I had a chance to speak to some of the officials down there who were extremely pleased by the individual, as well as I spoke to one of the commissioners in Radnor who could not speak highly enough uh, of this choice. So. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but having a new shade tree commission, I think this is exactly what we need for the township. Great. Any other comments or questions on the motion? My motion was made seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is consider affording Suzanne Pyle to act as the township health inspector. Again, Mr. Neese. So uh, in this case, we only received one response back to our RFP. Uh, there was a couple others that looked at it and at the last minute made decisions not to submit. Um, I will say uh, this is a third party, con a third party contract, fairly similar to the Arborist. We don't, it, this is not a full-time position at the township and we don't have uh, really the kind of work that would be a full-time position. Um, <clears throat> they've, uh, we've talked to the person, uh, they feel that they can do this work. Andy uh, has gotten very high recommendations um, from the state from this, of, on this person, and they would be providing us the service. So move for approval for Suzanne Pyle. Is there second. a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Russo to approve the appointment of Suzanne Pyle as our Township Health Inspector. Mr. Neese, um, she is uh, authorized to do this as a part-time role in light of the fact that she's a full-time employee of the state, correct? That is correct. Okay. And we're not hiring the state, right? We are not hiring the state. We are hiring her. And again, just like with the Arborist, this would be an annual appointment at our reorganization meeting. So effectively, she's being appointed through this year, and then we would uh, consider that reappointment at the beginning of each year, correct? That is correct. Okay. And this is also consistent to how we sort of have, you know, in addition to the arborist, because I know that's a new one, but looking at an existing position, it's essentially the same thing with the fire marshal, correct? Uh, no, uh, fire marshal is a little different. Um, well, the arborist is structured. It's not a full time job. They review it. Right. So it, it, it's similar in that. It's, I, I mean, in some ways, it's very similar to your engineer, right? Your engineer is not a full time position, they're a third party providing us a service. And so it's a very similar type of thing. Okay. And if the county was ever got their act together and came up with a county health department, we could always terminate this if we wanted to use the county services, correct? That is correct. Okay. And one last question to jump off on that. This is consistent. Is this consistent to what the rest of the county has done in terms of municipalities? It, it, it's, it's consistent with what smaller municipalities our size are doing. Um, okay. We have some municipalities that actually have somebody on, on staff that has that skill. Um, but there's many municipalities like us who are either using the state or using a third party. Got it. We just don't have enough work for a full-time health inspector. We, we have 65 places a year that need to be inspected. Um, you, you, you do the math, if you say that they're there even twice a year and they're there for you know 30 minutes to an hour of the time, it would be a, it would be a really over somebody, somebody full time. Right. All right. Motion was made and seconded to uh, uh, appoint Suzanne Piles our township health inspector. If there's no further question uh, or discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is item 13.3 consider approving the Newtown Township. 2021 through 2023 mowing contract to Dan Kelly's landscaping 
in the amount of $251,748 for mowing and landscaping services and $135,000 for leaf collection services. So the total bid for the three years is $386,748. Um, so, so move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Russo. Mr. Neese, if I may. Yeah, please. I, I just wanted to let you know, um, when we budgeted for this year for this, we actually did an increase um, in the mowing bid and uh, out of anticipation that it would in increase. We did not increase enough. We increased to 70,000. Uh, this works out to about $83,000 a year. Um, so uh, we will be needing to go back in uh, April uh, when we can do a budget increase and increase the budget for that purpose. Uh, it's also an increase uh, in the area of the leaf collection um, that there uh, was, if I remember right, uh, it was a little over double what it was last time. We had budgeted more, uh, but we didn't budget quite that much. So we'll have to go back and uh, do an increase there. We'll do that closer as we get to leaf season, as we start looking at how we're going to do leaf collection next year or this yep. year. And this was a uh, bid, and we did receive, according to the notes here, four um firms uh companies did submit and this was the lowest uh, bidder that is correct right. yep. any further questions or discussions on the motion seeing or hearing none all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed motion carries unanimously item 13.4 consider approving the drop entry date of april 1st 2021 with the retirement date of march 31st 2026 for Lieutenant Michael Savisky. Mr. Nee, some explanation, I think. So we, we uh, offered in the police contract this last year a drop. And actually, I guess this is worded a, a little incorrectly in that um, when Mr. Sav or Lieutenant Savitsky enters uh, the drop, he will be officially retiring on the, as, um, for the purposes of our pension. Um, and then he will work for us for five years after that. Um, and then uh, at that point, uh, he will leave uh, our employment. And so that is, that is the requirement. He can leave before that, but he cannot extend past that point. Uh, and so uh, what that means is that he actually, his pension will, he will stop contributing to his pension. He will not be on our pension uh, uh, he will not be on our books for purposes of the pension uh, in regards to what we're required to put in each year. Um, and, uh, but he'll start drawing that pension and it will go into a separate account um, and will be invested on his behalf for when he does leave the township in five years. So if we were to approve this on April 1st, he no longer receives any pension payments from us, correct? That is, well, he, we, we no longer have to put in on his behalf. Right. Contributions. He's right. still, he contributions, he still gets, he's still, he actually would start receiving his pensions. So he's, he's, he's retiring for purposes of this. And he right. must leave our employment on Within, or before uh, March 31st, 2026. That is yep. correct. Okay. So move for approval. So a second. Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, super, seconded by Supervisor Altieri to approve item 13.4, the drop entry date of April 1st, and the retirement of March 31st, 2026 for Lieutenant Michael Savitsky. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Hearing Since none. To, uh, oh, question? Never mind. Sure. Yeah, I'm all right. Because I think it's more of a personnel question that I'll just ask uh, outside of a public meeting. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by say, uh, saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right, item 13.5, consider approving the Mike McGraw proposal for an applied ecological bog turtle study at Greer Park for a cost not to exceed $7,500 for phase one and phase two. Mr. Neese, throwing it back to you. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, 
I, I'm having just a moment because I think they actually changed the name on yeah. the company on me this afternoon. Yes. Um, and that. so, and they also changed the price on me. So yeah. I, go ahead. Yeah, the price was 6500 Yeah, the price was 6500 when we sent it out on Friday. I'd asked them what they thought it was going to be, and that's what they told me. And then when they came in today with the actual bid, it was 7500 mm -hmm. Let me just real quick tell you why this, this needs to happen if we're moving forward with the three uh, grants. And so, and why, why we're, why this is kind of being rushed at the last minute. Um, so in, in order to do a bog turtle study, you have to do it between, I believe it's April 15th and May 15th. It's like a very small window that you can do that study. And there's two different studies that have to happen within that window of time frame. Um, and so we were kind of rushing at the end of last week uh, to put things together. They, they, like I said, they threw out a number really quick. They thought it would be about 6,500. It ended up coming in at 7,500. And it's, I thought it was going to be Mike McGraw doing the study. It's actually a different group that's doing it. And I, I, I will have to pull that up to give you the exact name of the group. Herpetological um, Associates? Yeah. Yes. Did I pronounce that correctly? Um, and that, like I said, that came in, uh, <laughs> Uh, later to us, and we just got it today, and that's that's the reason for the change on your agenda, and it's also uh, where it is. But the challenge that we have in the money is very short for the um, for the uh, fish national fish and wildlife uh, grant. It's uh, it's a two year window uh, that's the full length, and you have to have all the construction done. Uh, if we got this grant awarded to us like this summer and didn't have this study, we wouldn't be able to do anything until we got the study done next, next April and May. And if we didn't have that, like it would limit our period of time. And that doesn't give us enough time to do all the design and all the construction and go out to bid and get the project done uh, in the time of the grant. And so that's the reason for this. Well, John, I'll make a motion for approval, but um, can what was the name of the company? I don't have that here. It's I still have logical associates. OK, so I'll, I'll approve uh, the company that John just mentioned for seventy five hundred dollars uh, to can do you this study. That, Ed? Can you spell that for me? No. <laughs> H-E-R-P-E. -E I say, if you want to know a woman's name. L O G I C A L Associates. H A. That's okay. Motion is made by Supervisor Partridge. Is there a second? Second. Motion was seconded by Supervisor Altieri. Um, I'll, I'll just add that my familiarity with these things is that you don't have a choice, and that if we want to see, if we want to score well on these grants and have any chance of getting this money. We got to have this done too, and if we miss this window, then it's a whole another year. So, I, I think, you know, again, we don't like last minute things. We certainly don't like the price being raised and then it raised and the names being changed at the last minute. But there's not much I don't think we can do on this one. So, I think this is what we need to do to get this project or continue the great movement that we've had on this project. And uh, so, that's my two cents worth. Great. Yeah, we'll have a yep. devastating domino effect if we didn't get it done this year. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, if there's no further questions uh, or discussion on this item, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh. Motion carries unanimously. Last item under new business, consider approving the change order uh, from more construction services relative to the Clearbrook Clear Culver project at a cost not to exceed $18,800. This has been a very expensive culvert, Mr. Neese. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to actually turn this over to Eileen in just a second, but just to give you some background here, um, we went in and we were replacing the culvert right. and we had that contract and we were doing that. But in the process, if you remember, two things happened. One is there was a, a sink that was happening in the roadway uh, that was actually outside from underneath the culvert. And when we went out there, part of the price is covering that repair. Uh, that they had to do. In addition to that, uh, once the culvert was put in, it was determined that one of the 
uh, drains coming in was also damaged. And so uh, the other portion of that repair is related to that. So I'll let Eileen give you a, a better understanding of what all that is and uh, turn it over to Eileen. Thank you, Stephen. Um, we actually have three repairs that need to be done. The depression in the road has already been um, exploratorily excavated and um, no real cause other than poor backfill was found. Um, and that restoration is still needed. There was a four inch under drain that was connected into the 30 inch culverts um, and needs to be reconnected in the street. And then um, as construction progressed, there was a sinkhole in the yard that was um, opening up uh, the yard of, I believe it's 16 Clearbrook. And um, KBX Golden performed a televised inspection of that line so that we were able to assess the, the condition for the entire length. It's approximately 320 feet long from uh, the inlets up at the, the top of the slope. The last 20 feet um, was so badly deformed and deteriorated um, that the televised inspection, you could actually see um, a tomato cage and topsoil bags, the, the bag itself that were down in it because I think the residents continued to fill in a, a hole um, but that last section, um, in our opinion, needs to be replaced. There were some other spot repairs that um, could have been undertaken. We just thought the prices for those were um, a little excessive. So we didn't feel that that was appropriate to authorize at this point. So there are three repairs for a total of $18,800. And, and Eileen, these are to create or correct past sins, I'll call it? Yes. Anybody have any questions for our engineer? Would anybody like to offer a motion on this item? Sure, I'll offer a motion. So move to approve. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Motion is made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Altieri to approve the change order from more construction services relative to the clear book culvert uh, at a cost not to exceed $18,800. Any further discussions on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor, please sing Papa saying aye. 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 Be opposed. Motion carries unanimously. We have nothing listed under old business. Under resolutions, we have two resolutions. The first is considering approving resolution 2021-13, Greer Park Revitalization Project Grant Application, DCNR. Mr. Altieri, would you like to read that one for us? I would, Mr. Chairman. Resolution number 2021-14 Greer Park Revitalization Project, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Whereas Newtown Township desires to undertake the project Greer Park Revitalization Project, and whereas the applicant desires to receive from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation a grant for the purpose of carrying out this project, and Whereas a submitted application package implies intent to uphold all regulations and procedures as required by the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, the granting agency, and whereas the applicant understands that submission of the application, including all attachments and appendices referenced to therein, will become the terms and conditions of a grant agreement between the applicant and the foundation if the applicant is awarded a grant. And now for, therefore, it is resolved that one, the grant application may be electronically signed on behalf of the applicant by John A. Non, PE, who at the time of signing has the title of Chairman, Newtown Township Board of Supervisors, and the email address of jnon at newtowntownship.org. Two, that this official signed, this, if this official signed the grant application electronic authorization prior to the passage of this resolution, the grant of authority applies retroactively to the date of signing. Three, if the applicant is awarded a grant, the grant application electronic authorization signed by the above official will become the applicant slash grantee's executed signature page for the grant agreement, and the applicant slash grantee will be bound by the grant agreement. 
Four, any amendment to the grant agreement may be signed on behalf of the grantee by the official who, at the time of signing of this amendment, has the title specified in paragraph one and the grantee will be bound by the agreement. Resolve this 22nd day of March, 2021 at a public meeting of the Board of Supervisors. Yeah. Um, Is there a I, second? I, I'll, I'll second that, but um, with a note that this is resolution 2021-13. No, he just read 2021-14. <laughs> so. No, I, no, I understand that, but this is this this particular grant it was There's two. Was 13. There's now two there's separate still grants, still so still 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 14 is the National Fish and Wildlife. And that's, 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 what, that's, that's what he just read was 14, not 13. So we, we are voting. Item 15 point. He read item 15 point. Yeah. I just got excited and jumped in. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are voting to approve item 15.2. I believe you've already, are you still uh, offering or seconding that motion, Mr. Partridge? Yeah, okay, uh, I, I will. Okay, so the motion was made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Partridge to approve item 15.2 which is a resolution 2021-14 National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant application. Any further questions or discussions on that motion? I just appreciate that everybody had me read that and didn't stop me midway through to correct me in the wrong motion. So thank you everyone. <laughs> You're on a roll, Mr. Altieri. <laughs> Hearing and seeing none, uh, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, now we'll consider approving resolution 2021-13, the Greer Park Revitalization Project grant application to DCNR. Mr. Terry, would you like to read this one? Yeah, I, I, I will, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will. <laughs> I got that um, mixed up there. So resolution 2021-13. Now, if I start this up on the wrong foot, just you're stop good, me. You're good, so far uh, <laughs> Whereas Newtown Township applicant desires to undertake the project Greer Park Revitalization Project, project title, and whereas the applicant desires to receive from the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources Department a grant for the purposes of carrying out this project, and whereas the application, the application package includes a document entitled Terms and Conditions of Grant, and whereas the applicant understands that the contents of the document entitled Terms and Conditions of Grant including appendices referenced to therein will become the terms and conditions of a grant agreement between the applicant and the department if the applicant is awarded a grant. And now, therefore, it is resolved that the grant application may be electronically signed on behalf of the applicant by John A. Non, PE, who at the time of signing has a title of Chairman, Newtown Township Board of Supervisors, and the email address of jnon at newtowntownship.org. Two, if this official signed the grant application electronic authorization prior to the passage of this resolution, this grant of authority applies retroactively to the date of signing. Three, if the applicant is awarded a grant, the grant application electronic authorization signed by the above official will become the applicant grantee's executed signature page for the grant agreement and the applicant slash grantee will be bound by the grant agreement. Four, any agreement to the grant agreement may be signed on behalf of the grantee by the official who, at the time of signing the amendment, has the title specified in paragraph one and the grantee will be bound by the amendment. I hereby certify that this resolution was adopted by the Newtown Township Board of Supervisors, uh, sorry, by the Board of Supervisors Newtown, Township of Newtown of this applicant this 22nd day of March, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap to approve resolution 2021-13. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Outstanding. Let's, let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and hopefully we'll get one and not both of these. That'd be awesome. All right, next under on the agenda, we have ordinances, item 16.1. This is consider approving ordinance 2021-02, stop sign ordinance amendment as advertised in the February 25th, 2021 Delco Times. Uh, Mr. Russo, do you wanna read this one? Uh, hold on a second. Ordinance 
Yeah. 21 or 2021-02, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. As an ordinance amendment or uh, an ordinance to amend the code of the Township of Newtown, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Chapter 165, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Article 1, Section 165-1, Stop Intersections Designated. Whereas the Township Code 165-1 designates the stop intersections for the township streets, and whereas based on the township engineer's recommendation of the March 4th, 2021, a stop sign is needed at Partridge Lane at Crumb Creek Lane. Now, therefore, the Township of Newtown hereby ordains that Section 1, the Code of the Township of Newtown, Chapter 165-1, Vehicles, comma stop intersections designated shall be amended to add to paragraph L subsection six north on Partridge Lane at Crumb Creek Lane. Section two effective date this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after the adoption of the Township of Newtown. Section three repeal or any or all ordinances, resolutions, parts thereof, inconsistent with are repealed, rescinded, canceled, or annulled to the extent of such inconsistency. Enacted by the Board of Supervisors of the Township of Newtown, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, this 22nd day of March, 2021. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Which is made by Supervisor Russo, seconded by Supervisor Partridge to approve ordinance 16.1, which is, uh, uh, or approve item 16.1, which is ordinance 20, 2102, the stop sign ordinance. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is additional business. We have nothing listed. Following that is board comment. Would any board members like to make a comment? Wow, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, I'd like to just call the comment. There's any members of the general public that would like to make a comment on any items that are not on the agenda, please uh, raise your hand and be acknowledged. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Nice, we have one hand up. Doesn't happen frequently. It's Patty Wilson, 4111 Battles Lane. Um, just registering how thrilled I am to hear that you're seeking appraisals for open space acquisition and certainly hope one of the properties is a property I've asked about repeatedly in prior meetings. That being said, any progress forward to acquire open space in this township is really well received. I'm also thrilled to hear about more education for the zoning hearing board. Um, I can only say that that's got to be a great path forward. Uh, last thing is, I do note, however, <laughs> because, you know, why not, that you mentioned maybe planting some crab apple trees. Speaking from experience, crab apple trees um, are an incredible allure for deer and our deer population, certainly in my neighborhood, is increasing exponentially. So I would ask that should you decide to plant new trees, exclude crab apples um, because they will become problematic. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. I see no other folks wishing to make a public comment. So uh, we will close that portion of the meeting and uh, note that uh, we are in German. I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. Wish everybody a happy Easter. And our next meeting will be April 12th uh, at the same time. So uh, have a great Easter, folks. And we'll talk to everybody on the 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.